The greatest gift God has given this world is the precious gift of grace. Please understand that grace is not a teaching. Grace is a person, the person of Jesus Christ. John 1.17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Open your spirit and prepare to receive, through Bishop Herb Andrew, God's Word of Grace, which is building you up from the inside out, while positioning you to enjoy the inheritance Jesus paid for with His blood. This is your moment of grace. Hi, I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this is your moment of of grace. In our last podcast, we talked about how it is that people who were not like Jesus liked Jesus. It's an amazing thing when you really observe the life that Jesus lived while he walked this earth. It's amazing to me how it is that people who were not like him, they literally liked him. In other words, we all know that Jesus is a major religious figure, but individuals who were not necessarily religious in nature, individuals who did not necessarily spend time in the synagogue, these individuals, though they were not like Jesus, they actually liked Jesus. And I just believe that when you are exposed to the true gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when you get a revelation of all that Jesus has already done for you, you'll begin to understand why people who were not like him, why they literally liked him. You know, when you think in terms of God's grace, when we think in terms of how it is that because of that grace, that unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor. I, I, I love the fact that, that it is undeserved favor. Even though I may not, you may not deserve it because of the finished work of Jesus, we get to enjoy it. In other words, because of God's grace, we as believers are able to enjoy good that we don't deserve because Jesus took all of the bad that we do deserve. And when you get a revelation of that, when you really begin to walk in the revelation of all that he has already done, then why would anyone not want a relationship with Jesus Christ? See, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing to consider that people who were not like Jesus, they actually liked Jesus. I believe that the reason they liked him so much is because whenever Jesus entered your life, he enters your life bearing gifts. I like to call him the gift that keeps on giving because he himself, he is a gift to us. But when he comes into our life, he always comes bearing gifts. We talked about it in last week's podcast, how it is that he comes into our life with this gift of absolute forgiveness this forgiveness that is free from any imperfections. It is complete. It is perfect in nature. And it is an amazing thing to understand that once Jesus comes into our life, we now get to enjoy this gift of absolute forgiveness. I want you to hear me today because when Jesus died on that cross, you must understand that even if you have never put your faith in him, he died for your sins as well. The price, the penalty for your sins have already been paid for. And all he is waiting for you to do is just embrace his finished work so that you too can enjoy this awesome gift of absolute forgiveness. It's amazing because when you begin to walk in that, you begin to understand that because of the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, his grace constantly reminds us that our past does not serve as poison to our future. How so? Because all of the sins of our past, all of our sins have been forgiven. Past sins, present sins, and future sins. He says it like this in 1 John chapter number 2 and verse number 12. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. For, 
he says, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. That phrase, are forgiven, it literally describes an action which is viewed as having been completed in the past once and for all and never, ever needing to be repeated again. Listen, my friend, because of what Jesus has done, you too can embrace the gift. You too can enjoy this gift of absolute forgiveness. That's why people who were not like Jesus, they actually like Jesus. Because every time Jesus came into your life, he comes bearing these awesome gifts. He himself is a gift, but he is a gift that keeps on giving. You know, I thought about how it is that when you look in our society today, our society is filled with individuals who are walking around under self-condemnation. Think about it, man. The, 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 the one person is, is, that is harder on you than anyone else is you. In other words, no one, absolutely no one is harder on us than we are on ourselves. When we make a mistake, oftentimes we condemn ourselves. We, we pronounce ourselves guilty. We, we pronounce ourselves sentenced for punishment. We, we judge ourselves and, and, and we go as far as to pronounce ourselves unfit for service or unfit for use. Some of us today, some of us think that, that God cannot use us, that, that, that we can't do great things because of the mistakes of our past. And I have good news for you. Because of Jesus Christ, because of his finished work, you too can enjoy the gift of no condemnation. Man, this gift of no condemnation, it's a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool that is needed to cure this gift, this, this uh, disease rather, of, of self-condemnation. Self-condemnation is a disease. It is a disease that can only be cured through the gift of no condemnation. Think about it for a moment. Think about it. Whenever we fall short, Whenever we sin, whenever we do something that, that we know is not pleasing unto God, no one else has to know about it. But understand that sin always demands an answer. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The Bible says the soul that sinned shall die. So whenever we sin, our conscience demands that sin be punished. That's why, you know, uh, everybody, nobody else knows about what you're doing, but you, nobody else knows your personal struggle, but you, and, and in the sight of everyone else, you have it together, but within your heart of hearts, you know, that, that the mistake or the sin that I, that I committed, it is there and sin always demands an answer. Our conscience always demands that sin be punished. And it's this need to address sin's demand for punishment that literally opens the door for self-condemnation. This is what makes the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so special. Because think about this. Even though sin demands an answer, even though whenever we make a mistake, our conscience demands that our sins be punished, grace, when we make a mistake, it literally turns all of the attention to the cross. It takes the attention off of us. It takes the attention off of our mistake. And grace turns all the attention to the cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, where the full punishment for our sins took place. And because all of our sins have been punished in the body of Jesus Christ, now you and I can walk around with this gift of no condemnation. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing it is to be in relationship with Jesus who is never. Did you hear what I said? He is never the source of condemnation. As a matter of fact, the gospel of St. John says it in John's gospel, chapter number three, 
in verse number uh, 17, he says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hear me today. Hear me today. God, Jesus is never the source of condemnation. As a matter of fact, the Bible clearly says that he did not come into this world to condemn the world, but he came into the world that the world through him might be saved. Listen, there's some wonderful gifts that we have when we embrace Jesus Christ, but we have to understand one of the greatest gifts that we can embrace is this gift of no condemnation. Romans 8 and 1 says it like this, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now I know the rest of that verse says, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. You must understand that that was thrown in. That was written in by the interpreters in an effort to, to, to expand on what was originally there. But when you look in the original text, the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, in other words, this gift of no condemnation, it comes without any conditions other than you and I being in Christ Jesus. Did you get that? This gift of no condemnation, it comes without any conditions other than us as believers being in Christ Jesus. If we are in Christ Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation. Why? Because condemnation comes as a result of our sins demand for punishment. And there's no condemnation in our life because whenever sin demands punishment, we can point to the cross of Jesus Christ where all of our sins and all of our mistakes were atoned for. And then when you think in terms of this gift of no condemnation, this is not something that you have to wait for because the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation. In other words, the gift of no condemnation, it is a now issue for us as believers. The moment we encounter his grace, please hear me today. The moment that we encounter the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we instantly receive the gift of no condemnation. In other words, because of Jesus, we presently, we continuously, and we will forever operate with this awesome gift of no condemnation. No wonder people who were not like Jesus, like Jesus. And when you and I begin to embrace the awesome gifts that he has already placed in, uh, put in place for each and every one of us, whether we have accepted him, whether we are part of the church, it doesn't matter where we are in our walk through this life. We would all have to confess that I may not be religious like Jesus, but man, when I think about what he's done for me, I like Jesus. Listen, family, next week we're going to pick up on this and we're going to continue this thought because there are some awesome things that Jesus has already done for you. And the more that you are aware of what he's done, you too will fall in love with this awesome Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. This has been your moment of grace. Be sure to follow us on our social media platforms by subscribing to our Beacon Light of Homer YouTube channel and following us on Beacon Light of Homer Facebook and Instagram pages. Join us for a life-changing word on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. for our Beacon Light of Homa worship experience or Wednesday on our Grace Reloaded Bible Study at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bishop Herb would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and be sure to stay connected by subscribing to this Moment of Grace podcast. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, make sure you share it with your friends and loved ones. Remember, 
Because of His awesome grace, our God is faithful to manifest every blessing and benefit Jesus has paid for through His finished work on the cross of Calvary. Our part is to believe, receive, and enjoy what has already been provided, motivated by His tremendous love. Until next time, this has been your moment of grace. Thank you for sharing on today.